Thank you so much for joining me, everybody, on 10 Minute Tuesday. This is episode 19 with Alice McKnight. What's going on, Alice? Hi. How are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this is, like I said, episode 19. I got Alice on here, and this is 10 Minute Tuesday. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Uh, Alice, go ahead and introduce yourself. All right. Uh, I'm Alice McKnight. I am a senior data analytics consultant at Peach Data. Um, I've been in this space uh, like right at two years um, as of a few weeks ago. Um, prior to this, uh, my background is in microbiology and I have a master's in um, public health policy and I spent the entirety of my career at C for this at CDC. Wow, wow. So really a, a diverse and interesting background. Um, two years as a, as a senior consultant, but then before that, MPA. So a lot of healthcare data, I'm sure. But, you know, before you even got into the analytics role, like what even compels you to get into data to begin with? You know, well, prior to this, like my role was not in data at all. I was a hard science person, a lab person. And then I moved on to training and evaluation of training products for public health laboratorians. I sort of kind of tripped up into data a little bit. Um, you know, I was the person at my job who knew Excel. So uh, being that person, I, you know, took charge of like all the reporting, like in a quarter, in a month, um, writing the data parts for our grants and our end of the year to reports to Congress, that kind of thing. So as I was doing that, I got tired of always doing an Excel. It's like, there's got to be a better way to, <laughs> to do this. Um, and I saw a presentation in Tableau and asked, like, how did you make this? And they said Tableau. And basically, I went to my boss and was like, hey, just give me a license. Let me work it out <laughs> and let me figure it out. And from then on, I uh, transferred all of our reporting through Tableau, um, got a lot of good feedback for it. And while I was learning, like, I was... Like really like this is part of the data I like. I really like feeding the data, preparing the data, making slides, making dashboards, that kind of thing. And, and if it's not like I was looking for the current role that I had now, um, I was one of those people who learned from the community. I started posting to the community um, after attending um, Tableau Conference 2020, the one that was virtually online. And I joined the community and I was basically out there learning out loud, posting things as I was learning it. Um, you know, people were watching me and seeing me putting things out there, out there engaging with uh, the community. And my current company, like, reached out to me and <laughs> basically on the basis of, you know, a few conversations about, you know, what I liked, you know, an offer was made and I decided to jump and here I am. Wow. Two years. That's crazy. That's flown by. I remember you posting stuff and still do follow you and everything. Uh, but I can't believe it's been since 2020. That's incredible. And then I love the concept of learning out loud. I'm going to steal that and use that uh, <laughs> for for all of my stuff. Wow. You know, it probably didn't originate with me, <laughs> but I have hold, I really held on to that. So, yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love that because I think everybody learns out loud at some point. You might not necessarily post it, but like we're figuring stuff out on the fly. Um, all the time. So, Absolutely. all right. Let so, people know you're out there learning. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, with that, you got into data. Now you're in here, but before that, uh, you weren't in the data analytics role. You're in MPH, but even before that, you probably had some other jobs. So, what has been your least favorite job to date? Uh, let's see. When I was in college, I worked in a lab, a research microbiology lab. And uh, a part of my job was to grow and harvest sales for experiments. And to get those sales, you had to, um, we got them from mice. So I had to learn how to dissect and take out the bone marrow of a, of a mouse, take it out, scrape the sales, roll them. Uh, not the most pleasant thing to do, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> something that we had to do uh, in the lab. But uh, 
I always, when it was my turn to do it, I was like, okay, uh, let me get my mind right for this. <laughs> this is favorite thing I had to do for a job. Wow. So from actually physically touching stuff to now computers and data and, you know, such a transition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. So this is and, much better. This yeah, is much better. definitely. <laughs> All right, so you had a transition and, and now you're in data, um, but we all have had a process to get to where we're at. So what would you consider your biggest failure, quotation marks around failure, and what did you learn from that experience? Uh, yeah, uh, I thought about this question a little bit, and I guess the word I don't, I don't want to use failure. I think, at least in my case, I think for me, um, it would be the... Um, the lack of putting myself in places where I would, uh, I could possibly fail. Like I have spent the majority of my academic life, my uh, professional life, making sure that I put myself in positions where I was least likely to fail. But in this case, in transitioning, there had to be space for me to fail. Uh, I had to put myself in a, in a building at a place where that could happen. And that's where growth ha happens. That's where it happens the fastest. Um, being a little bit uncomfortable is healthy and good. And, uh, you know, really learning to embrace that um, has really um, put me on a faster track um, and put myself in positions where I didn't think I would be. Wow, that's incredible. Like, I think you're the first person, especially with this series that I've talked to about, like, I won't say avoiding it, but kind of playing it a little bit safer. But then when you did like embrace some of the failure, just the the stuff that opened up for you, like how how challenging was that for you to kind of embrace failure? Um, it took it, it took a lot, but like the opportunity came and it was like, hey, you can leave your jo your job, which for me was my dream job. Like I had all intentions of working in public health since college. After I decided I wasn't going to go to like a PhD in a hard science, like my original plan was, I fell in love with public health and I wanted to work at CDC. I went to Emory for that specific reason so that I could internship at CDC. And I was in my, you know, in my dream job. I was doing what I wanted to do, what I trained to do, what I love to do. And so trying to to leave all that for after finding something else that I that I loved, uh, it took a, it took a lot. It took a lot of conversations with you know my family, um, with myself. Like, am I going to do this? What does it mean if I don't do well here? What does it mean if I do do well here? Um, yeah, that that was a, you know a little bit of a soul searching on my part. Thanks. That's awesome. Thanks for the transparency on that, too, because that's that's a really um, fascinating thing. And I think a lot of people don't talk about, especially with transitioning from you know one industry, one career, what have you, to another one, kind of the journey that it takes to get there and internally as well. You know, some of the conversations and stuff that you have in, inside yourself. Because I will say, like a lot of people transition transition a little earlier, like I've been in my job my my place of work for you know 20 plus years so i uh, i'm here for the 40 plus year old transitioners you can transition too even after you know decades of time doing something else you can jump too um and not you know lose your momentum in your career because being mid-career versus transitioning early on are like to totally two different beasts wow i love that i love that thanks so much for that all right. So what is one piece of advice you'd give someone who is just starting out in their career, whether it's uh, just starting out initially or transitioning from one to another? Um, just know that uh, you're not uh, you're not going to be perfect. Uh, you have to look. This is piggybacking on what I said before. Uh, don't let, you know, the fear of the unknown or the possibility of not being perfect, like stop you from doing something. Uh, whether that thing is going to be your final thing. I mean, I've done things earlier on in my career. I'm like, oh, hmm. I'm not, but, you know, take an opportunity. You never know what an opportunity uh, will lead you, whether or not that becomes your path or not. You know, be open to your opportunities. Take them when they come and, you know, 
see them to the end. Love that. Love it. Love it. All right. So tell me about the most influential people in your life and how they've impacted you. Uh, let's see. Uh, I will always say a parent, my mom, uh, single parent mom. Uh, she was always like behind whatever I wanted to do. So if I want to do X, she found a way uh, so that I can do it. Like even today, she does not know, <laughs> does not you know, understand like what I do. Or even when I was working in the lab, she really didn't understand what I did. But if I said I wanted to do it, she was like, okay, what do we need to do to make sure Alice can do this thing? And I'm always happy for our support. I want to be that same kind of backbone to not my son. Um, let's see, two. Uh, I was lucky to have a really good boss at CDC. Uh, uh, as I changed my very last one, um, the one that you know really pushed me into Tableau. She was like, "Okay, here's the here's here's the license. You do what you do," and she made sure that people saw my work, that I was always recognized for it, um, that I was pushed for it, and when it was time for me to tell her, like, "Oh, I'm I'm going to leave," I mean, she was, you know, happy for me. She was supportive. I still talk to her to this day about my um, career. And um, having her was really instrumental in, you know, me feeling comfortable jumping and, you know, we'll be close you know, forever. And third, um, my son. Uh, part of the reason, you know, that I jumped was because I want him to know that he, um, to trust himself, trust his skills, trust, be confident in, in himself, to be not unafraid to take a risk. So how can I teach him? to do those things if I haven't done it myself. So um, those last couple of years, how I move, how I put myself like in speaking positions, which I never would do before, things that I would be afraid to do. I always think I wanna show my son that I could do these things that I'm not just telling you to take a risk. I'm not telling you to you know, be confident in your abilities. I want to show him that I did it so you can do it to be a model for him. So. Those are my three. Love it. Love it. Nothing beats a mother's love and support. I mean, it's just incredible. Always um, a great mentor is so vital for, you know, growth and support and happiness. And then kids, like kids always just, you know, I think you can, like you said, like, I don't want to tell you to do stuff. I'm not want to do it myself. So it always like puts you in a position exactly. to like try new things because like, I don't want to just be like, you can do it. And then I'm too scared to <laughs> even try it myself. <laughs> exactly. yeah. so that's incredible that's incredible so uh this was great i enjoy watching your progress and everything you post on social media it's all fire so you know keep it up keep doing great job and it's incredible so uh with that where can listeners actually find you at online i am on twitter ab mcknight 18 I'm also, you can find me on LinkedIn. That's not a lot of Alice McKnight's and you'll see my face. Um, I am pretty active on both, particularly Twitter. I talk Tableau data and feel free to reach out to me. I have spoken to a lot of people, especially people who are talking about transitioning and uh, supporting them. So feel free to reach out. Awesome, awesome. Y'all heard her, hit her up, especially for people who are transitioning and trying to get into the data field. Um, keep up the great work and this was great. And if you haven't already, please like, share and subscribe and we will talk to you all next week. You all have a great day.